Have you tried lasagna? Charles, have you tried it? Have you tried the lasagna? How is it? I can't believe I'm getting paid nothing to just sit and be ignored. Did you know that 90% of the people who have watched videos on this channel in the last month are not subscribed? That's thousands of people who just aren't hitting the subscribe button and it's making us look bad. So why don't you go ahead, hit that subscribe button and it will help us out a lot. Call to actions, apparently they're effective. Let's see if they're right. This $100 pair of active noise cancelling wireless earbuds by Tronsmart are apparently on par with the top end buds from the likes of Sony, Sennheiser and Apple. But chances are you've never heard of Tronsmart. I know I hadn't until they asked us if we wanted to check out a pair of their latest earbuds. So why would you even consider going for a pair of these over a more name brand product? Well, that's what we're here to find out. <laughs> On the inside of the box, you've got details about their hybrid active noise cancellation technology, which we'll get to more in just a moment. But more importantly, here are the earbuds themselves. It's got a fairly standard charging case with the Tron Smart logo on the front, which if I'm being honest, I'm not a big fan of. There's something about the font that just reminds me of like a tire shop or a hardware store. The lid nicely snaps open and closed, but it does feel a little bit flimsy. In fact, all the plastic on this thing does feel a bit cheap, but it has got a nice matte black finish. So at least it has that going for it. On the back, you've got a USB-C port and that's pretty much all you get with the case. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna get these earbuds out. <laughs> Luckily, the earbuds themselves look a lot better. I love the copper finish that they've put around the edges. The fact that they've used the Tron Smart icon instead of the logo is a far better choice. It looks a lot better, but the plastic still feels pretty cheap. The silicon does feel soft and they do have a good weight to them. And they do have an IP rating of 45. So at least you don't have to worry about getting stuck in the rain while wearing these or having a particularly sweaty workout. Also in the box, you get two extra pair of ear tips as well as the USB-C cable. And like with most earbuds and headphones, you also get your complimentary carry case. I think I have about five of these now and I've never used any. Now, unlike some earbuds, these ones don't have fins or wings. So I'm not sure exactly how well these are gonna stay in my ear, but let's find out. They don't feel like they're gonna fall out anytime soon. And already just putting them in my ear with them off, there's already some pretty good sound isolation. Everything in this room and even my voice sounds muted. On first use, I don't feel any discomfort and that's probably because the silicone that they've used for the ear tips is very soft. So they don't put any pressure on your ears, they just feel comfortable. It doesn't stick out too much, but it doesn't exactly sit flush to your ear. So I can imagine it snagging on a few things like masks or hats. Now let's get this thing connected so it stops talking to me about how it hasn't found a device. It's great chatting and all, but it's getting annoying. <laughs> the bass is so good. <laughs> The Apollo Bolts use True Wireless Stereo Plus rather than your regular True Wireless Stereo. So instead of your phone connecting up to one earbud, then that earbud connecting up to the other earbud, your phone now connects to both earbuds simultaneously, which means that you just have less chance of dropout. It also means if you wanted to use just one earbud, you can now use either the left or the right earbud rather than having to use the one which connected directly to your phone. These also utilize Qualcomm's QCC225 QCC5124 chip. Why such a long name, Qualcomm? Apple chips are called like H1 or W1. That's way easier to remember, which provides a stronger connection and lower latency. So for example, if you're watching a video or a movie on your phone, you don't have to worry about audio delay, but if you're using music production or looper apps, or I imagine even games, you're going to experience some latency. So for those apps, you're best off keeping a pair of wired headphones around because as good as Bluetooth technology has gotten, it's still not perfect. The controls on the Apollo bolts are touch sensitive, so you don't have to worry about any buttons. And luckily they're very simple to use. A single tap will turn up or down the volume depending which earbud you tap on. Double tap will pause or play your music and triple tapping cycles through the different ANC modes. Then if you hold your finger on a sensor for two seconds, you can skip tracks. And then you have controls for rejecting, answering calls and your voice assistant. Another neat little feature is the ear detection. So if you put these in your ear, it will auto start whatever you're listening to. And when you pull them out, it will auto stop, which is a very nice touch. Now for the most impressive feature and the one that potentially puts them on par with the big name brands is the noise cancellation which uses a combination of two types of ANC technology and six inbuilt microphones to give you 360 degree full noise cancellation, which is something I've only ever really experienced in headphones and nothing as small as an earbud. So I'm very excited to try it out. Talk. Have you tried lasagna? Charles, 
Have you tried it? Have you tried the lasagna? How is it? I can't believe I'm getting paid nothing to just sit and be ignored. Can be iced. I thought it was still sunny out. <laughs> this might be quite hard to light. I'm torn. These earbuds already provide good noise isolation, so even with ANC off, when you're listening to music, you can't really hear the outside world anyway. And the ambient mode will actually amplify the ambient sound around you so you can be more aware of your surroundings. Whereas full ANC will cancel out the louder and more annoying sounds, like the sounds of plane engines when you're on them, or trains, or any public transport for that matter. On a full charge, you get 10 hours of continuous play, and with the case, you get over 30 hours of additional charge, though I imagine both of those will be a bit shorter if you're always using A and C. But these will still see you through most long haul flights on a single charge. And if you ever fancy chilling out with a 10 hour long fireplace loop on YouTube, these earbuds have you covered. Plus when the time comes to charge these things, you can get one hour of use from just 10 minutes of charging. So you're looking at just over two hours to get a full charge, which is a pretty fast charging time, but not the fastest on the market. I think you can get 90 minutes of play time from 10 minutes of charging with the Sony WFs, but you only get six hours of overall play with noise cancellation on and eight hours with noise cancellation off. So they both have their perks, it just depends on what's more important to you, charging speed or overall charge capacity. Now all these features are great and all, but is the sound quality any good? Well, yeah, it's pretty damn good. Thanks to the graphene drivers inside these things, they dish out some fantastic bass. Some people might even find them a bit too bassy, but personally, I like me some bass, so no complaints here. But overall, the sound is rich, there's good clarity, there's good separation between the mids, lows, and highs, so there's nothing lost. I will say that you get the best sound quality when you have the ANC on, but whether or not you have it on, you still get a very high quality sound. Now, if you really did want to turn down the bass, unfortunately, there is no way to adjust the EQ on the earbuds that themselves, so you are going to have to mess around with your phone settings or whatever device you're using to adjust the bass. There was meant to be a device exclusive app which was due to drop this September which would allow you to adjust the EQ, customize the touch controls and access firmware updates, but it's nearly October and there's still no sign of it. Hopefully it comes out sooner rather than later because having EQ settings solely for the earbuds would be the icing on an already tasty cake. I know that analogy was pretty bad, but hopefully you got where I was coming from. Now I don't know about you guys, but I've always hated taking calls on earbuds or head headphones, especially with noise cancellation, because I always worry about how loud I'm talking. As an introvert, I like to draw as little attention to me as possible when I'm in public, so talking loudly on, let's say, a packed train is literally my worst nightmare. So we're going to test out a call and see how it sounds to the person calling, me, and anybody else who happens to be listening, which in this case is you, you nosy buggers. All right, here comes the call. Let's pick up. Hello. What's the unusual noise you're hearing? <laughs> On my end, the call quality sounded pretty good. And on the receiving end, with ANC on, it sounded the best. With ANC off, it sounded the worst. And then with ambient on, it sounded the most normal, like you were just on a mobile phone. So taking and receiving calls on these things is no problem at all. For $100, the amount of features that they've managed to cram into these little guys is staggering. They have everything you need when it comes to ease of use, comfort, sound quality, noise cancellation, and that, the only real downside that I have with these earbuds is the build quality. The plastic does feel quite cheap, so if you were to say step on them, I can't imagine them surviving. But they are sturdy enough that they're not going to fall apart in your ear or anything like that. And they are compact and lightweight, so you're barely going to even notice that you're carrying them around. If you're looking for some high quality earbuds with solid noise cancellation, but you don't have the money to splash out on some WFs or AirPod Pros, the Apollo Bolds are definitely worth checking out. And with that, I think that's going to be it for another edition of Looted. Shout out to Keegan McAdams, Natasha Savage, Pikafoop, and Luna on Patreon. Thank you very much for your support. And if you like this video, hit like. If you like all our videos, hit subscribe. We've got more videos on the way. You can also follow us on our social pages. If you want to support the channel further, check out the link in the description to our Patreon page. And you can also join us on our Discord server. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.